Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel DS Tech Mirror. Topic for today's video is how to insert repeating section into Word template using Power Automate. So let's get started. I have created a SharePoint list called Bank Statement. In this particular list, I have two users, test user 01, test user 02, and these users have few records against their name. So test user 01 has four records and test user 02 has three records. So what I have to do is I have to send these records into a word file and then you can again we can send it over an email or by any other means. In my last video I covered how you can insert data dynamically into a word file through word template. In this particular video I will show you how you can insert dynamic rows into a word table. So uh, over here you could see for test user 01 we have to create four rows. For test user 02, we have to create three rows again with this data set. In real time, number of rows may vary. For few users, again, based on your different different scenarios, it could be five rows, ten rows. So number of rows would be dynamic. So how we will handle this kind of scenario? In my last video, where you know we generated appointment letter, so everything was static. That means you know we have some uh, username, we have some date of joining, we have uh, shift start time, shift end time. All these things was there, but dynamically row generation was not there. So that I will cover in this particular video. If you are not aware about how to insert data into Word template, you can watch this video directly as well. But you know, if you want a much better understanding, I would recommend go back and see my last video. You can find the link in the description box below as well. So now as usual, what I will do, I will directly start with the Word template because first we have to create the Word template and then I will start with the Power Automate flow. So guys, over here, this is the Word template which I will be using repeating section demo. Here, you know what I have done, all this is the static text, hi, below is your bank statement and this is just a table, nothing else. This is the table with one row where, you know, I have created the headers, date, date, credited and debited. If I go back to my SharePoint list over here also, I have these three column amount, uh, credited, amount, debited and date. And customer filter, I will directly apply in the Power Automate using some hard coded value. Because the my motive is to just show you how you can generate repeating sections. Now, now what I will do, I will add one row in this particular table. Insert, insert row below. Now here I have to add the date. So what I will do again, if you're watching this video directly, let me tell you to get this developer tab. If you're working with the word template, you have to enable this developer tab and how you can enable this go to file options, customize ribbon. And from here, you would see this option developer for you. It would be uncheck. You can select this and click on. Okay. Then you will get this tab. So now go to developer tab and over here I will be inserting one control over here for date I will say plain text control. Similarly same control I will insert for credited and same for debited. Now what I will do I will follow some good practices I will you know go to the properties and I will add the title and tag for these properties and here I will say date you can add any name of your choice title and tag can be same. Then what I will do, I will again say credited. And just notice one thing, all these controls are of show as of bounding box and then debited. So for debited, I will say debited. So these are the three control we have, but now we are not sure how many rows will be there for different users. So so we cannot create the defined number of rows and add these controls again and again. We have to make it dynamic. So to make it dynamic, what I will do, I will select all these three columns, one, two, and C. I'm not selecting the first row, only this particular row where I have added these controls. So please make sure they have to select the right row. And once you are able to select this row, go and click on this a section called repeating section content control. Just click on it. And it will add one more control combining all these three controls together. So if I click again over here, so this is a date one, but if I click this one over here, you could see, uh, let me increase if you're not able to see the zoom size. See, this is date one and, but this is one. 
I'll select and say property. So this is the table repeating section control. And over here I will say uh, statement table or my uh, my statement. And one very important thing is all the other controls are of type bounding box. We have to change the type to start and end type. That's it. And okay. So now this is my statement. Now what we will do now I will go and you know work on my power automate flow but before that I will upload this particular template in my SharePoint so I will save and what I'll do I'll go to my SharePoint I have a, a folder over here called template in the default document library and I will upload that particular template over here so I'll say drag and drop repeating section demo and here it is getting uploaded this is done now I will go and create a power automate flow from scratch. I will say automation and this time I will use instant flow. I will name my flow as repeating section demo. Manually trigger a flow, create. And as a next step, what I will do, first of all, I will get the data from that particular list called bank statement list. So here I will use the trigger, sorry, I will use the action from SharePoint. And here I have to use this action called get items because I will be getting all the items which is there in that particular list. Get items. And now I will select the site address. It is there in my POC site. List name is again bank statement. And now I will use one, you know, query over here to limit the entries to one particular user so over here what i will do i will create a variable i will add the you know store the username over there so i'll say initialize variable i will say var username i will convert it to type string and here i will let's say i'll store the value but before that let me try to uh, apply the filter using o data query over here so here my username is customer name and I will be filtering with the help of an email. So what I will do, I will come over here and I will say customer name and because it is a personal group field, so we have to expand it. I will say mail equal and here I will pass the email ID of the user whose statement I wanted to fetch. That I will store it over here and I will say where username. Where username so this is done guys this is done just one change over here I instead i know this email will not work but we have to type completely email a &M, capital so what i have done i am getting the item and this uh, from sharepoint list using the filter of the user in user email i will store it over here test user 01 so now i'll get the all the records of the test user 01 so now after getting the items what i'll do i'll first use this populate word template again in my last video i covered that this is a premium uh, action and for this we need premium connector so i'll say word template or if it is not coming then i will be using word online then definitely this will come in the search yeah and here i will use this populate a microsoft word template and over here I have to select the location of my templates here I'll select my SharePoint site I have multiple options I can select one drive group but it is stored in my SharePoint site POC site so this is my site I'll select my document library again it is saved inside the default document library and file is present in my template folder I'll go to the template and here I'll select repeating section demo. so everything is done and now it will populate the my table over here you could see this my statement date credited and debited and here i have to enter now what i can do i have to add this data over here and i'm not interested to use this loop control because i have to you know i have the data over here but then i have to iterate everything and put it over here so what i'll do over here if you will see this option allow us to input the entire array so i will store everything which this get item is giving me in an array and for that i will use a select action from the data operations i'll say data operations and i'll say select and now here i'll say what i want 
So this will return me value list of items all the data I'm getting from here and then what I'll do I'll say what I want. First of all I want date and then I will enter the date over here and I'll get the date. Then I want credited amount credited sorry I have to enter over here amount credited and debited so I'll say debited amount debited my bad again amount debited so I have generated everything in this array date like uh, the uh, um, amount credited or debited date credited if any or debited if any so this is done and now I will put this entire array over here output of the select statement and then as a last step what I will do I will generate a word file first of all in the SharePoint itself so I'll say SharePoint and I will use this action called create file this is create file and here I'll use this site address again same address just a different location i'll say folder path i will be this is the default document library and here i have a folder called bank statements so yes yeah, statement i'll use this particular folder file name this is important so file name i will save and over here i can put any other file name i'll say okay what i'll i'll do is i'll put the utc now the expression and the extension DOCX and file content I will get it from here so I'll just scroll down Microsoft Word document and I think this is done now let's see if we are facing any issue we will fix it and if it is working we'll see how this statement is generated and then we will try to run the same for second user we'll see if it is generating dynamic rows flow is saved I'll run a test manually test continue run flow my flow is running and flow ran successfully no it failed let's see what is the error okay so i've got an error over here because this codes are missing over here uh, around this user email so i'll go back over here get items filter and i'll put this codes is because of this Quotes and I'll put a space now along with that white space. I'll fix this uh, slash also. I have to use this slash. Okay, now it should work. At least this action is not supposed to give us any issue. Automatically test. And our flow ran successfully. So I'll just take you through this flow. This is where you know I have initialized the username variable. Then get items over here. It is giving us the all, all the items. And then it populate the word template and created the file. So now I'll directly go to the folder and statement folder and it got generated. Let's see if it's you know populated the right data and you'll see all the details, all the things are generated dynamically, the rows, everything got generated and if we have to cross verify i'll just come over here for the test user 01 if you see 200 0 along with the date 14 15 17 27 so everything is fine now now let's quickly see how this will work for another user which is test user 02 so i'll go to my flow i'll edit it and i'll quickly change the id over here email id and everything else is same save and then I'll test it. Test, I'll say manually because I wanted to start a new test thread, not with the same item. Run flow. Done. And I'll directly go to my template folder once it ran successfully. It is saying, okay, done. And this is my new item. I'll open it and you'll see. Now we are getting three rows. So guys, this is how you can generate a dynamic table in a word using word template. So key is you have to use this repeating section control, which is there in your uh, word 
after enabling the developer option then in your flow you have to populate this word template which is an array in the form of an array for that you can use select statement and you can directly populate it otherwise it will get populated it's very difficult you have to use this loop and if it is a complex word template where you have some static controls and some this table also then with loop it will give you a lot of trouble or you won't be able to populate it so go with this approach and then create the file now if you want to send it in over an email you can do that so guys that's it for today's video if you like this video please like and share the video and subscribe to the channel to get notification for our upcoming videos till then much love keep learning thank you